Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince and I'm Army Veteran. And today we're talking about compensation, the new health assessment for transitioning service members. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You can find more content here on YouTube for Vet Talk, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. And if you're a veteran and love to share your story and resource for veterans or a non-veteran who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we got all the important business aspect out of the way, let's get into this topic, man. So today we're talking about the compensation, new health assessment for transitioning service members. Why do I think this is beneficial to talk about? Because I remember when I got out in 2013, there was no health assessment. There was no sit down with anyone and talk about veteran compensation. When I got out, I didn't have any clue about this. The only thing that I knew was from a whisper that I got from one of my brothers in arms when I was at Longstreet Hospital in Mannheim or in Longstreet, Germany. I was receiving some help for a situation that I had going on at the time, um, which was sleep apnea. And um, what he told me at that moment was, hey, bro, you know that... um." you get a 50% disability for having severe sleep apnea. And I was like, 50% disability for sleep apnea? Like, I had no clue about what this was all about. Like, I didn't know. I just was going down there to get checked out because as an NCO at the time, I kept falling asleep on duty, and my NCOs were mad at me. And I was like, bro, listen, I I get what y'all are saying. You know, NCOs, we lead the way. We lead the charge, but when it comes down to it, it's like, bro, I cannot stay up. I'm always tired, and I couldn't figure out why I was having these headaches in the morning time. I couldn't figure out why I felt like I was just always tired, and all I want to do is sleep. And when I went to sick call, that's when I found out that I may have a problem with something obstructing my uh, my breathing at night while I sleep. Now, my wife had told me previously about it because she said that I used to stop breathing in my sleep. Well, I had no clue that this would lead um, later lead lead to me being paid for that. And that's because they didn't have a system in place like this. So I just really wanted to show this, um, show this because of some new information that I found on the VA website. And I kind of wanted to um, put this out, you know, just really want to read over it and give you an understanding of what this article talking about. It says, why do we uh, why do we have to go to these exams at all? How do we get this new form of some of the questions that veterans may be asking? And it's an active duty service members uh, um, who are transitioning out of the military and filing a VA claim for disabilities shouldn't have a, to attend different but similar medical examinations conducted by DOD and VA. Historically, they have, and now that's about to change. So this is where the biggest... Um, the biggest issues are coming in at right here is, you know, as far as for us uh, as military, former military personnel, um, we used to have to do two different examinations. That's why a lot of times veterans were running into issues where they've been fighting, trying to prove that, you know, what happened in the military really did happen. Well, now what they're doing as far as DOD and VA, because again, one thing people don't know about them are is there two separate organizations? The DOD, uh, um, the VA is contracted to help DA, the um, DOD out, but they are not the same organization. There are two different organizations, and yes, within the VA, there are different organizations within the VA because they're all contractors. So that's one of the understandings that you have to have when dealing with them. Um, is understanding that man, just because you taught the, you know, Miss Sally on floor four. Doesn't mean that Mr. Brown on floor one know what Mr. Sally has going on because they're separate organizations that do different things and you have to be the one that connect and bridge the gap together. If you're having problems with that, you know, you reach out to their bosses. And I showed you on my last video um, where I went over the VSOs and over, you know, basically on um, veteran patient advocate, I gave you sites and links that you can go to to connect with those people so that you can get the proper help. So it said, why do we have to go to these exams at at all? 
Service members are required to meet the Department of Defense statutory and policy requirements for a separation health assessment before they transition from active duty service. And for good reasons, these requirements are in place to ensure that the service members' health care needs are addressed before separating. VA also requires similar separation exam for those filing disability claims through the um, benefits delivery at discharge, which is known as the BDD program, or the Integrated Disability Evaluation System, IDES, uh, IDS, as they say, to evaluate the claim conditions and make a rating determination. Um, these two different but similar exams are redundant. Thankfully, the VA and DOD have completed a multi-year effort focused on developing a single comprehensive exam form to be used eventually by both agencies. That way, regardless of which agency conducts the exam, the other can use it for all of the reasons previously stated. The new separation health assessment meets the needs of both agencies and most importantly, minimize the redundant examined nations. So that is a big plus. And I think it's a great thing that they're doing this because again, I get the frustration of trying to service connect things. I get the frustration of, hey, they said this over here, you say this over here. Now they're eliminating all of that other stuff and they're making it one standard form, which is going to help those who are transitioning out of the military so that they don't become like those of us who has been out of transition. They helping us so that we don't have to go through that stuff that we as those who are already out of transition um, have been through. We've been through a lot. It's very stressful. You know, you lose a lot of sleep sometimes. You start pulling out your hair. There's a lot of frustration, tension because of this system not being in place. But from what I'm seeing, it's coming out and it's going to happen. And right here, you can see all of the information, but I'm going to read over it, go over it so that you who may have a hard time understanding, I can give you my basic understanding of what's going on. It says service members are required to provide a part, a self assessment questionnaire when filling a DBB, I mean a BDD or IDS claim as of April 1st. So as of April 1st, this is what they had going on. It says on May 1, VA began using a separate, um, a, a new separation health assessment disability benefit questionnaire part A and B. DOD is expected to begin using this common form to include a DOD use only part C later this year. The new common form will streamline the disability pro claim process, reduce redundant examination, and ensure medical assessment for those separated for service are more accurate and complete. It, all, it will also encourage service members to enroll and participate in additional transitioning services when warranted. And I think this is, again, beneficial because when I got out, I'm going to be honest to you, man, they had a lot of death by PowerPoints, as we call them in the military, going on. And a lot of this stuff, I'm be honest with you, I kind of just ignore it because a lot of it was geared towards retirees. And I even got a rinky dink on um, resume done by them. So like I said, it, it was just like, okay, man, what are we doing here? Man, I, I'm ready to just get out of here because I'm ready to go on terminal leave so I can get up out of Germany and be home with my family. So I really wasn't trying to um go through um what they had going on. And to be honest with you, at the time, they didn't have none of these resources. And I'm pretty sure for those before me, if I had limited resources, I can only imagine what y'all had. But thank God for what everybody else had to go through to help the others get what they need. So this is what they got. And then the question you may be asking is, how do you get the new form? It said the department clinics work together to establish content of the common form comprising both um, subjective patient histories and objective clinical evaluation, clinical subject matter experts and specialty groups covering audiology, mental health, women's health, environmental, occupational exposure, traumatic brain injury, visions, and dental health identify baseline element for inclusion in the f common form. Further collaboration, collaborative efforts produce high volume improvements that include suicide and violence risk screening 
and the communication of resources for survivors of sexual trauma in the military. This new form will replace the DOD form 2807-1, Report of Medical History, and 2808, Report of Medical Examination for Documents of Separation Health Assessment Otherwise Required of Service Members at Separation. It also replaces the VA prior separation health assessment known as a DBQ. So right here, if you click on, for my information for this um, VA claim exam, visit the VA website at Disability Claims Exams. And all you had to do is click on that site. And I'm going to show you the next site that they take you to before we close out. And it takes you to, and it brings you here to va.gov again, as we were currently on, and it brings you to this section. And here's where you go to get all of this information that you need to help you as you transition out of the military. And what I want to say is, man, it's, a, it's an honor and it's a blessing that um the VA has finally come to a place to where them and the DOD are finally coming together, working on these issues and things that so many veterans have suffered for for many years. My era, we went through a little bit, but I can only imagine what those doing the Vietnam, Korean War, and all of the wars before us, World War II, one, all those people, what they went through. Um, and I thank God that, you know, now they're actually working out some of the kinks in their armor. They're getting it squared away and veterans are going to get the help that they need. So please go in the description box, get this information, do what you need to do, handle your business. Don't sit down. Don't wait around. Don't use excuses as I don't have time. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. If you go on the VA.gov website, they have all the information you need. I'm pretty sure during your transitioning process, they have all the information that you need. So this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince for Vet Talk. As always, good people, Vet Talk out.